Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Father Michael Renninger and on behalf of the parish community here at St. Mary's Catholic Church, I welcome you to the celebration of the Eucharist as we pray for the repose of the soul of our brother, Peter John Quinn Sr. Before our mass formally begins, I'd invite Peter John Quinn Jr. to come forward for a few remarks. Thank you, Father. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, on behalf of my three sisters and our families, I want to thank you for being here to celebrate Dad's life. Um, I have to warn you that I have a lot of my dad's Irish blood in me. Uh, those of you that know me well know that I can cry at the drop of a hat. I got that from my dad. I'm guessing my teammates from Riverfront probably have an over and under as to how many times I might lose it up here. I'll take the over. 
Um, so be, please bear with me. My nickname for dad was 332. Three strokes, three heart attacks, and two broken hips. But he always kept going, nothing could keep him down. Dad liked to teach by telling stories. He used to tell a story about a group of explorers that were hacking their way with machetes through a very thick jungle trying to find the village. One of the explorers decided to climb a coconut tree and he looked around and he said, hey, wait a minute, you're going the wrong way. The village is over there. The people looked up and they said, shut up, we're making progress. My whole life, Dad was someone who always climbed the coconut tree for me and reminded me of where the village was. He used to tell me, Pete, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Dad knew where he was going. His life took a lot of twists and turns. But when he found Alcoholics Anonymous 48 years ago, he found his North Star. He loved the program. He believed in it, he studied it, and he lived it. He died sober, one of the great accomplishments of his life, and a lesson for all of us that life is a marathon, and it's lived one day at a time. We had a lot of fun with Dad over the years. We sailed a lot together. He thought he could read the weather better than anybody. And when it started to get cloudy and a little windy, he would say, don't worry, there's still enough blue in the sky to make a pair of sailor's pants. Unfortunately, he wasn't as good as he thought, and we got caught in some pretty wicked storms. But he was undaunted, and he always found his way back to the dock. He was like that in life, too. No matter what the storm was that hit him, and a bunch did, he always found his way back to the dock. We also liked to play a lot of golf together. He loved playing golf. He used to love to tell a story about when he was lucky enough, we were lucky enough together to play Augusta National. And he was standing on the 11th fairway and his caddy asked him how far he could hit a five wood. Dad said about 200 yards. His caddy said, lean on it. And he did, hit a high majestic shot, landed about five feet from the hole. He made the putt for birdie. He used to love reminding me of that shot. Must have done it a hundred times. He was like that in life, too. He leaned into everything he committed to. He spent the last seven years at St. Mary's Woods, right across the parking lot from here. He didn't like it at first, wanted to stay in his condo, but he always, as he always did, he leaned into it. My sisters and I want to thank the staff and residents of St. Mary's Woods who became family to Dad. He loved you very much. His favorite time of year was St. Patrick's Day, when he dressed in green, wore that silly green hat, and sang Irish songs to anybody that would listen. He loved weed bowling and was a force to reckon with in bingo games. A few years ago, Dad called me very excited that St. Mary's Woods has arranged some memory classes for him because he was worried he was losing his memory. I said to him, Dad, I said, that's great. I said, when are they? He said, I don't know, I forget. <laughs> but he said the staff would remind him. Thank you so much for making it such a wonderful home for him. I visited Dad a few days before he died, and he told me that doctors had just come, and there was nothing they could do about his shortness of breath or his fatigue. They told him he had a bad heart. He wasn't mad about it. He didn't complain or try to pretend his impending death was a burden. He said, Pete, I'm so grateful they were honest to me. He said, whatever is, is. We talked about the serenity prayer. We talked about acceptance, so we knew he was dying and he wanted me to know he knew. I asked him what he was gonna to say to God when he saw him, and he said, I've been thinking about that a lot. He said, I'm gonna ask him how he does it all. He said, somebody pricks their finger in Asia, and he knows about it. How does he do that? You see, to God, Dad wasn't some sort of abstract deity. He was real in his life, and I have no doubt that God knows exactly what, uh, how God does it all. He called me the night before he died, and he told me he wasn't scared told me he loved me and, and enjoyed our visits together, told me he wasn't scared and wanted to make sure that I knew it. He died with a rosary in one hand while holding his good friend John Lomax with the other. He fell asleep in total peace. Dad was my North Star. We all need that in our lives. When we were sailing and anchored out at night, Dad used to always point out where the North Star was to us. So I knew where it was, but I never knew why it was there. Now I do. God put it there so I can look up at night, remember all the things Dad used to teach me, and know exactly where the village is. Good afternoon. On behalf of our St. Mary's Parish community, 
Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. I invite you to participate in the spoken and sung prayer of this liturgy found in your program. And now please stand and direct your attention to our baptismal font at the entrance of the church as we join our voices in song. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We begin this celebration of the Eucharist recalling the day of our, Peter's of our brother Peter's baptism. On that day, he was declared to be a child of God, one who would inherit the promises of Christ Jesus. We now bless his body with this baptismal water, and as we do so, we pray that our brother may know the forgiveness of sins and the gift of life eternal. In that faith, we continue to sing. On the day of Peter's baptism, his family clothed him in a white garment, a sign that he had put on Christ and been enfolded by his love. I now ask the family members who have been designated to do so to come forward and to once again clothe Peter's body with this white garment. And as they do so, we pray that our brother's soul may be embraced in peace. In that faith and hope, we continue to sing.
Let us pray. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son has risen from the dead and strengthen our hope that your servant, Peter John Quinn Sr., will also rise again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to be seated as we listen to the first reading from the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death now listen to the second reading from the Word of God. A 
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building made from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> and I shall hear soft you tread above me and all my grave will warmer sweeter be for you will bend and tell me that you love me and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me it did not seem possible for us to celebrate the funeral mass of Peter Quinn, a man who used to sing his children to sleep with his repertoire of Irish tunes, uh, we could not celebrate this man's funeral without at least a snippet of almost everyone's favorite Irish song. Most Americans are familiar with at least the first verse of O Danny Boy, but the part that I just sang is from the second verse, and it's rather somber. That second verse describes a moment much like this moment, when a family member has died, 
and that person's grave is visited by grieving family members. And what do the family members do in the face of death? Well, according to the song, they do three things. They pray, they say how much they loved the one who has died, and they look forward to, be re, re, to being reunited in heaven. That's what the song says. So that's what we're doing here today. We're here to pray, and we need to pray, because death is a hard thing. Our brother Peter lived a long, full life. After all, anybody who can make it well into his eighth decade is doing something right. More recently, he knew and we knew that his health was declining. At first, we got to see that here because he wasn't over there. Being a good Catholic, he always sat in exactly the same place over there. That's how we take attendance of such things. We knew that his health was declining. We were missing him here. I was seeing him at Mass at St. Mary's Woods. No matter how much we know intellectually is happening in the life of somebody we care about, especially if their health is declining, no matter how much we tell ourselves that we will be ready for what's going to happen, well, the death of a father, the death of a grandfather, the death of a friend is still difficult and all of us will miss him. We miss him. So that's why we have to pray. We pray for his, earth, for his earthly family, his family that is still very much here. We pray for his children, for Kathleen and Peter and Colleen and Megan and their spouses. We pray for his grandchildren, for members of the extended family who are here, for nieces and nephews, all of you who counted him as part of your family. We're praying for you. We come here to pray. And we also come here in this Eucharist to say thank you. Thank you to God for God's precious gift of love. God loved our brother Peter and we experience part of God's love through him. There was so much to love about our brother Peter. He was born in Brooklyn and grew up on Long Island. His siblings, Harry, Bill, and Adrian, they knew that their brother was an energetic young fellow. Peter loved to tell stories about he and his siblings and friends would ride horses on the beaches of Long Island, keeping watch for enemy submarines during World War II. I never, know, I never heard if they actually saw one, but it sounds like a great way to spend an afternoon. He had a lifelong love of horses, which he passed on to family members. He was always active. When he was young, perhaps that activity was when he was doing work on the family farm up in the Catskills, hunting for woodchucks, playing tricks on his siblings. He was an outstanding tennis player at Bishop Laughlin High School. He even spent some time in the seminary. He went on to Villanova to study history. He was part of the Navy ROTC. And after college, he served our nation in the Navy. How appropriate that we're celebrating his funeral on Veterans Day. And eventually, he married. His four children told me that when they were little, Peter was the kind of dad who was hands-on. You remember riding on his back in the living room, sailing with him, uh, playing on a team that he coached. When Peter started to work the program with AA, he found a path that would allow him to move forward in recovery for the next 48 years. And he didn't simply work on his own recovery. He became an ardent advocate for and mentor of many people who were starting out on that same road. 
his generosity, his desire to help was clear. He had careers in business and loved the opportunity to become a teacher. In his spare time, he had the chance to play golf. Lots of golf. Every day, golf. And he continued to sail and participate in AA and spend time with and, and share wisdom with his grandchildren. And we also recall today that our brother Peter loved the Lord. He grew up in a faith-filled family. And every Sunday, I looked forward to seeing Peter here at church. And every Sunday, as I stood in the commons after Mass, he would come up to me, often getting ready to put his hat on to go outside. He would stop, and he would say how glad he was to be here. And he would mention something specific that he heard in the homily that he was going to take home and think about. And as he talked about the homily and what he was going to pray about, every week he started to cry. Every week. He was just someone whose faith touched him in a very heartfelt level. Like many Irishmen, his heart was directly connected to his tear ducts. Peter's faith gave him strength in the difficult times in life, like when he experienced the deaths of his parents and siblings, or more recently when he faced his own health challenges. He loved to tell stories. Most Irishmen do. Well, you know the story of his life even better than I do. So I encourage you to keep telling the story. The song, O oh Danny Boy, tells us to pray and to love. And finally, the song tells us to look forward to that day when we will be together again. Today's scriptures speak of how that happens for us. How is it that we walk through the doorway of death with hope? Well, in our first reading, the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the Old Testament people who were very concrete in their thinking. They believed if God lived up there and we live down here, then the closest place we can be to God here on earth is on a mountaintop. It's the place where heaven and earth touch. And so Isaiah uses that image of a mountaintop experience to describe what happens when God's people, especially God's struggling people, experience that God has drawn close to them. Isaiah says, every tear is wiped away. And God gives us everything that we need. Notice, not everything we want, but everything we need. This is a, a, an image of a God who is intimate with his people, constantly present to and for his people, a God who is never far from us or disinterested in our well-being. This is the God that Peter knew throughout his life and came to love ever more deeply in these final years of his life, a God who was with him at every moment of the journey, and I suspect that if God was that close to our brother throughout his many years here on earth, how would it be possible that God could spend eternity without our brother close by? In our second reading, we hear from St. Paul, who loved to tell the best story ever, the story of Jesus. And wherever St. Paul went, he told the story of Christ, his dying, and is rising. Whenever Paul proclaimed that story, he provided profound perspective to all of his listeners. It's frankly the perspective we need today. St. Paul reminds us, first and foremost, that this life on this beautiful planet, this life with the gift of, of really good food, with the gift of family, with the gift of, of friendship and music and laughter, this life is an amazing gift from God to be lived with gratitude and generosity. 
But St. Paul also reminds us that this life here is not our permanent home. We are made for eternity. And that gives us perspective about what's worth holding on to and what we need to let go of. Because for each of us, as for our brother, there comes a point when our energy begins to fail and our health begins to weaken. We pass away. We all pass away. But what does not pass away is Christ and his call for us to come home to him. St. Paul says it again and again, that it's in the dying of Jesus that our death finds its meaning, and it's in the rising of Jesus that our hope for resurrection happens. And it is from the heart of Jesus that we experience mercy and forgiveness. It's crucial to mention mercy on the day of a funeral, because priests and deacons are tempted to, to find out really great things about the person who's died, and we put them together into a nice homily, and then the person that we're burying ends up sounding like a saint made out of stained glass. But that won't do. Not today. Not ever. We're not here praying for a person made out of stained glass. We're praying for a man made of flesh and blood. Peter was imperfect. And I say that because we are all imperfect. He was a sinner. We're all sinners. He experienced brokenness. So do we all. But the good news is that the Jesus whom Peter loved is now risen and his mercy overwhelms anything in us that feels broken. In today's gospel, we hear the consoling and life-giving invitation from Jesus, who says in the second part of this passage, come to me, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. This is, in effect, a restatement, or perhaps better, the perfect statement of God's desire for intimacy with each of us. Intimacy, closeness here on earth, and for all eternity. When I first met with Peter's family a few days ago to plan for today's celebration, I was deeply touched by one thing that they told me. They, they said that when they were little, Peter would put them each to bed, then he would sit in the hallway with his guitar and sing to them as they fell asleep. There was a specific song for each of his children. For his daughters, those songs were classic Irish tunes. I'll take you home again, Kathleen, my wild Irish rose, and the rose of Trolley. And for his son, he sang that famous Irish song. I've been working on the railroad. Oh, to look that one up in my book of Irish songs. But as I heard that story, I thought to myself, what a beautiful gift to be sung to sleep by somebody who loves you. Well, today we sing songs for Peter, asking God to allow our brother to rest in peace. In fact, the song, O Danny Boy, tells us that in the hour of our death, we should pray, we should love, and we should look forward to that day when we will see God face to face. That day when the Lord will bring us all together in the peace of the kingdom. So I trust that our brother Peter is praying for us today from his place in eternity. Perhaps, perhaps, our brother is still singing to us singing a message such as, I shall sleep in peace until you come to me.
We now prepare to offer our prayers of intercession to the Lord. I invite forward the two family members who will help to lead us in those prayers. And as they come forward to lead us in those prayers, our response to each of these intercessions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Peter came to the waters of life. May he now enjoy God's eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Peter was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now be welcomed at the eternal banquet table. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who dedicate themselves to the service of others, for members of the military and first responders, may God strengthen and protect them in their daily efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who mourn Peter's passing, especially the members of his family, may they experience consolation through their faith in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Peter's deceased family members who preceded him in death, for his parents, Harry and Viola Quinn, his brothers, Harry and Bill Quinn, and his beloved sister, Adrian Quinn Jordan, that they may reunite in God's glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with addiction, may they know peace and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here in faith, may we be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now be seated. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours 
will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, as Holy Church. O Lord, look favorably on our offerings so that your departed servant Peter may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned so that those who are saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of life eternal. Indeed, for your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and saints, we praise and glorify you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated. We've reached that point in the Mass when Catholics come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. Please follow the directions of our ushers who will invite you to come forward row by row for communion. If you're not receiving communion today but would like to come forward for a blessing, you're very welcome to do that. So if you're coming forward for a blessing, please place your hands in front of you like this, and that's how we will know to offer you the blessing. Thank you.
As we come to the conclusion of our celebration here in the church, I again want to thank each of you for your presence and your participation in this Mass. Especially want to thank the Deacon uh, Peter McCourt, the president of Cristo Rey Richmond High School. Uh, and there are students from Cristo Rey High School here with us today, representing the student body as well. Uh, many of you, uh, in addition to the members of the family who are here, are uh, friends of, uh, of, of Peter's children and grandchildren, uh, friends of Peter from uh, St. Mary's Woods. And so whatever your connection to Peter and this family, thank you for being here today. Your presence and your prayers are a gift to this family, and on their behalf, I thank you. Immediately following the conclusion of today's Mass, uh, the family will follow out behind the casket moving through the church and commons and out the front doors to the funeral coach. And that's where they will be as the final song finishes. The congregation is invited also to make your way through the, the commons and out those front doors uh, where the family will be uh, before uh, heading down to Hollywood Cemetery for the prayers of internment. For those of you who may be visiting us here at St. Mary's for the first time, you may be wondering, what are all these pictures around the altar? Well, during the month of November, we call it the month of the Holy Souls. We start out with All Souls Day on November the 2nd, a day in which, in a very special way, we remember our deceased loved ones. And here at St. Mary's, our custom is uh, to bring photographs of our deceased loved ones, to place them around the altar where they are honored throughout this month, as a reminder that whenever we celebrate the Eucharist in prayer, uh, we are connected with all those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. It is to that community of those who have gone before us that we now prayerfully entrust the soul of our brother Peter. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Peter, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in departing, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and be blessed by his presence. Although this congregation may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of the kingdom. 
Therefore, we console one another through our faith in Jesus Christ. We now honor and bless Peter's body with incense, recalling that line from Psalm 141, which says, Our prayers rise like incense before you, O God. Our prayers do indeed rise like incense today as we ask the living God to embrace the soul of our brother Peter and to grant us consolation. In that faith, we join our voices in the song of farewell, which is found in your program. Let us pray. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Peter John Quinn, Sr., your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.